I'm Ellen Peters, Philip H. Knight Chair and Director of the Center for Science Communication Research at the University of Oregon. And I'm Renee Salas, a climate change and health expert with a variety of appointments at Harvard University and an emergency medicine physician at Massachusetts General Hospital. Today, we're going to give you seven evidence-based tips for communicating about the health implications of climate change. These evidence-based techniques will help you communicate more effectively with patients and the public, meet your goals, and have greater impact. But first, you have to identify what is the goal of your communication. You have to know where you're headed first, and then you can use the following seven research-based tips. Tip number one, current climate communication focuses on long-term impacts like slowly rising temperatures and ocean levels. But studies show that people react less to consequences that are far off into the future. They're just too abstract. So frame climate change around immediate health concerns. It will help people understand that it's here, it's now, and it's a problem for them. And it will make them more likely to act on your recommendations. Health professionals have a mission and a responsibility to improve health and advance equity. And climate change threatens this mission. Thus, making connections between climate change and health for our patients and communities align with our fundamental responsibility. You know the patients and communities that you serve best. Thus, you can identify the ways that the health of your patient, community, or audience is directly affected by climate change and start the conversation there. It's important for us to discuss these topics to empower and work with those we serve to help protect them from the harms of the burning of fossil fuels through air pollution and climate change. For example, I've had discussions with patients with asthma about how climate change is leading to longer pollen seasons and concentrations. Your tip number two, pick a trusted messenger. Persuasion research has taught us that messages from trusted sources tend to be more persuasive. And people follow recommendations more when they come from a trusted person or group. Climate change affects us all, but because it's become so politicized, getting messages from nonpartisan experts is more likely to get people to act on climate and health. Research suggests that getting climate messages from climate scientists may not work, but people report that primary care physicians are their most trusted source of information on the health harms of climate change. Health professionals as trusted messengers have a very powerful platform to communicate the connections between climate change and health. This means that we have an opportunity to make these connections for people like our patients, communities, policymakers, decision makers, neighbors, and loved ones. We can meet people where they are in their understanding. For example, I've testified before Congress about the impact climate change was having on my patients. Tip number three is to harness emotion. Feelings are particularly powerful in messages. Communicating environmental damage and the health harms of climate change in concrete and in emotional ways can both educate and motivate people. First, emotional communications can help people make that link between climate change and health in ways that are more memorable and long lasting than if those emotions weren't harnessed. Then not only will people be more likely to recall it at the moment that they might be able to act, but they'll also tend to perceive more risk and they'll be more motivated to make a change. A problem does come in though, if they also feel like they can't do anything about it. Research tells us that providing them a solution, something that they think they can do and that will make a difference, will help, will help them sidestep those feelings of helplessness and it will propel action. Health professionals, whether describing patient care or work with communities, have a unique ability to bring humanity to otherwise abstract data and concepts. We can share the emotion we feel when our patients and communities are harmed and or the emotions our patients and communities share. For example, I've spoken about a story of a four-year-old girl who was struggling to manage her asthma due to a perfect storm of factors driven by the burning of fossil fuels, traffic-related air pollution as she lived close to a highway, and climate change-driven problems like record pollen levels and ground-level ozone made worse by extreme heat. The mother's eyes welled with tears as she shared with me, I have done everything the doctors have told me. What am I missing? That forced me to ask myself that same question. What were we in healthcare missing? I often share how I felt convicted 
by the fact that I had missed these upstream drivers, making it impossible for her to manage her daughter's disease. And the mother's words continue to echo in my work today. But to get to the other point, pairing this with actions they can do, like discussing possible interventions such as working with their doctor to optimally manage their disease before spring, checking air pollution and pollen levels on phone-based applications before outdoor activities, weatherizing the home, and using air filtration systems. Sometimes the patients will drive the conversation even further upstream to the need for an equitable transition away from fossil fuels to healthy, renewable energy sources like solar and wind. Tip four, visual images tap into mechanisms related to emotion that are both potent and persuasive. So share pictures conveying the health harms of wildfire smoke and ash, or animations depicting coastal erosion to highways and homes. Research shows that these kinds of visual images attract attention more than text does. They're also easier to remember, and when they're emotional, they again have longer lasting impacts on memory and motivations to act. In fact, images induce more health behavioral change than text alone. So choose images that are personally relevant and relevant to your primary communication goals. We don't have enough images that visualize the inequitable health harms of fossil fuel pollution and climate change. While obtaining ones within healthcare environments and our communities require certain permissions from those we serve, we can make sure to both include images that place humans at the heart of why climate change matters as we all collectively work to create more images. But if you're unable to find a picture of something, you could describe the scene to your audience. Some example photographs like you see here could show the harmful impacts of wildfire smoke as climate change intensifies wildfires. These images could include people forced to use masks outside, coughing, or needing to use an asthma inhaler. Tip number five, facts are important components of health and climate change communication. But increasing knowledge and raising awareness aren't always enough to motivate behavior change. Telling a story can make information on climate change and health come alive for people. Stories help people understand experientially and intuitively what it is and why it matters. Instead of giving logical arguments alone, stories can describe fictional or true life experiences. You can tell a story using a chronological sequence of events and embed persuasive elements and concrete solutions within that story. When people feel absorbed by a story that's also similar to their real world, they're more likely to believe you. Because of this, they're more likely to change an attitude, feel like they're able to act, and actually take action. This approach may be particularly valuable, particularly valuable in communicating information and motivating change in behaviors at this intersection of climate change and health. So tell an engaging story one that conveys a future vision and provides solutions and strategies to meet that vision. Health professionals have a unique privilege of witnessing the stories and experiences of our patients and communities. These are powerful stories. We can also elevate these stories to the halls of power, highlighting the toll that fossil fuel pollution and climate change has. One story is a elderly gentleman whose wife called 911 because he was acting confused. The EMS crew said that when they got there to the patient's apartment building, that they climbed up to the top floor apartment and that when they opened the door, they felt like they were hit with heat from the Sahara Desert. This patient had no air conditioning and only had one window that was partially cracked with record-breaking Boston heat. As we transferred the patient over to the stretcher, back in the emergency department, we quickly got his core temperature and found that his core temperature was 106 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning that he was suffering from the life-threatening heat disease called heat stroke. The EMS crew said that they remained conflicted as they left the wife in that same apartment when they were transferring the patient. And I think about her to this day. Tip number six. Presenting statistics can drive understanding of risk and it can motivate climate-friendly and healthier behaviors. But many adults aren't very good with numbers. Nonetheless, research shows that providing statistics can help correct false facts and misinterpretations that they might have. Providing statistics also can earn people's trust and build better behaviors because people prefer to get statistics 
and they perceive them as useful. But methods of presenting statistics are often too difficult for people who need numbers to be simple and easy to understand. When communications require less cognitive effort for people, they actually understand more. So include only key information and include only the most relevant options, not all of the information. Also, do any math for your audiences. For example, rather than telling people about the risk of climate-related flooding this year for their homes and highways, convey the risk during the whole period that they see themselves living in that area. Public health and medical practice are driven by data, and there is a growing body of data for climate change and health. We can pair our unique ability to deliver human emotion, visuals, and stories with data that support these larger points. This puts a face to the statistics and why they matter. For example, the story that I just shared can be paired with a landmark study published in Nature Climate Change in 2021 that estimated there has been a 59% increase in heat-induced deaths attributable to climate change. For more background on how that statistic was adapted from the study, please see the perspective article Ellen and I published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2022. Our final tip number seven today is to get ahead of the barriers. That means you need to know enough about your audience to understand what barriers they face. Communications shouldn't be one way. You need to talk with your audience to find out what keeps them from acting on climate and health. It may be that people see the personal cost of action as too high or its personal benefits as too low. If that's the case, you can point out better behaviors, highlighting their low personal costs and their high personal benefits. For example, people are more likely to eat less red meat for climate reasons when they also consider that it improves their health. Similarly, people are more likely to ride a bike or a scooter if you highlight their personal health benefits. Making these connections can improve healthy behaviors for individuals. And research shows that they can also boost climate policy support. In other words, help people to hope and to believe by showing them the way. When we counsel patients and work with communities to increase their health, we have two-way dialogues to understand barriers and misunderstandings. Thus, we are already equipped to assess and understand the barriers. We need to keep those in mind during our discussions. In emergency medicine, I use the latest evidence to guide my practice. In addition, I consult specialists frequently once I've made the diagnosis to ensure my patients get the best care. The same is true for communicating complex topics like climate change. We need to work closely with social and behavioral scientists and communication experts to ensure we are using the latest evidence to guide us. I hope that this session will help guide your communications about the connections between climate change and health. We can and we will tackle the climate crisis, but only by working together. When the rubber hits the road, it's people who make the decisions to protect their health and our environment. Key to educating and motivating them is effective communication. For more research-backed tips on climate communication, download our printable tip sheet.